Welcome to our tutorial about the Area Loft command. The first Area Loft was introduced as a standard loft command in Inventor 2008. An Area Loft is used to design components where the flow of liquid or gas has to be precisely controlled. We're going to start our work on the Area Loft by creating a profile. Let's activate the Rectangle tool. Right click and done. Now let's activate the Circle tool. Right click and done. And let's apply a tangent relation between the circle and this side. Actually, between all four sides. One more. Right click and done. Now let's select the circle and convert it to construction geometry. We'll apply dimensions. One inch. And our sketch is fully defined. This geometry is controlled by a dimension placed on one line with all four lines being tangent to the circle. Let's click Finish Sketch. Let's right click on the XY plane to make it visible. Let's create another 2D sketch. The distance of the offset. Let's make it 10 inches. OK. Take a front view. And activate the rectangle tool. Let's place a second square. Right click, done. And an equal relation. Now let's dimension our square, one inch. And let's also dimension the position of the square. Two inches, OK. Also two inches here, OK. And let's exit the sketch. Now let's hide our work plane and the XY plane. Right click, visibility, right click, visibility. Next, let's create center lines between these two points. As we learned previously, center lines don't have to be at the center of sections. Let's activate a 3D sketch. Select Include Geometry. We'll select this point and this point. Line. This point. And the XZ plane. And create a line along the Z axis. Right click, done. Let's dimension our new line. It'll be one inch long. Let's create a second line now. Activate the line tool. You may notice that we don't see the triad anymore. Let's zoom out a little bit. There it is. Let's select this point. And select the XZ plane. And let's place our point about here. Right click and done. Activate Include Geometry. Let's include this line and this line. Now let's dimension it. Let's make this angle 45 degrees. OK. Another angular dimension. This one will be 90. OK. And the length of this line. Let's make it 1 inch long. To connect these two lines, we're going to use a spline. Let's select this point, this point, right click, create. Right click and done with the spline tool. To make a smooth transition between the lines and the spline, I'm going to use smooth constraint. Let's select the spline first and then the line. Select the spline again and this line. Right click, done. And let's exit the sketch. OK, looks good. We're ready to create our loft. Let's activate the Loft tool. We'll select the first profile, the second profile, and the center line option. Now let's choose a center line. We'll click on the spline and click OK. Looks good. Let's double click on Loft 1 to make some changes. Now we're going to use the Area Loft option. We see some text next to the profile now. Start position, end position, 
The end position area is 1 square inch. At the start position, we've got 0.68 square inches. Even though both were created by the same square profile, you may be wondering why that is. That's because the second area is smaller since inventor calculated this profile normal to the center line. Okay, let's double click on some of the text in our workspace. The section dimension dialog window opens. We can choose a driven section or a driving section. Driven is pre selected for us, and all other options are currently grayed out. Let's select the driving section option. Since this section was created by a sketch, we don't have the option to change the position of this section, but we can change the section size, for example, to 2 square inches. That carré symbol stands for squared. Let's click OK. Now double click on the text again. Section Dimensions dialog window opens. Under Section Size, we can use an area or scale factor. Let's use a scale factor and we'll change the value back to 1. OK. To create a new section, click in this window and then pick the sections you want to add. Click somewhere on the center line. Back to Section Dimensions. Under Section Position, we've got Proportional or Absolute Distance options. Let's select Proportional. Enter a value of 0.5. This distance is calculated along the center line. Let's click OK. And let's place another section. We'll click somewhere along the center line. Section Dimensions window opens. Let's move it 25% from the start point. And let's use the Scale option. We'll scale it down to a quarter of the original size. Click OK. Deleting a section is easy. Simply left click on it, then press delete on your keyboard. Let's click OK for now. One more thing I want to show you in this tutorial. Let's double click on Loft 1 and make some more changes. I want to place another point here, somewhere here. Under Section Size, the scale factor is 3.59. There's a reason we don't see 1 here. That's because the section is influenced by the two previous sections. Let's go ahead and delete previous sections. However, the area value is still 3.59 even though I've deleted sections 1 and 2. Let's remember the relative position of this section. It's 0 0.68. I'm going to cancel out of the tool and delete. Now let's place another section here. I'll enter 0.68 in the Section Position area. Select the Scale option. And now our scale is 1 to 1. That's where the original scale factor came from. Let's click OK. And now we've got the original scale at the 0.68 position. This concludes our tutorial about creating an area loft.